Today on Hot Thai Kitchen, we are making yam nam khao thot. สวัสดีค่ะ Welcome to Hot Thai Kitchen. Today we're making a surprisingly much requested dish called yam nam khao thot. Now it's a salad made with crispy fried rice balls and fermented sausage and a whole bunch of herbs. It's really really good. Now I say it's surprisingly much requested because you can't actually find it very easily in Thai restaurants overseas. In Thailand, it's a it's a strictly street food item. I've only ever seen them sold on the street. And what happens when you order it is the vendor will actually make the salad um, to order. So you can say, "Oh, I want a little extra of this, not so much of that. I want it extra spicy." And then you can kind of customize it. So when you make it at home, it's really fun to kind of treat it like a salad bar, where you prepare all the components, and then when your friends are over or whatever, you can make, you know, have everybody make their own salad. So that's what we're gonna do today. Uh, but before we do that, let's talk about what yam nam khao thot means. Yam means salad. Well, it's a type of Thai salad. Nam is a type of sour fermented sausage, and then khao thot means deep fried rice. So it's pretty straightforward. Although this dish has, it goes by a few other names. So if you see a dish that sounds kind of like yam nam khao thot, it's probably the same idea, perhaps with a slight variation. So let's first take a look at the most important part of this dish, which is the khao thot or the deep fried rice balls. Here are the ingredients: four cups of cooked rice, three tablespoons of red curry paste, three to four kefir lime leaves, center rib removed, and thinly julienne. Half a cup of shredded coconut meat, two teaspoons of fish sauce, one teaspoon of sugar. One egg, half a cup of rice flour, and a little less than half a cup of water. Hey, so the rice balls are very simple. If you're familiar with the Italian arancini or risotto balls, same kind of idea. So what we want to do first in here is get our basically mix everything together. <laughs> It's really that simple. Look, there's not much to show. Um, so there's the red curry paste. I'm just using store bought today. You can make your own if you'd like. Fish sauce. Now I'm starting with two teaspoons. As you know, every time we work with a curry paste, the level of salt in the curry paste will differ. I find two teaspoons a good place to start. When we go to make the salad, we'll add the fish sauce extra so we can adjust there. So sugar just went in. Kefir lime leaves going in. Make sure you cut them very, very finely because they are not very comfortable to eat if they're big. Okay, shredded coconut meat. This stuff is not the dry shredded coconut that you see in a regular grocery store. This is fresh. I, well, not fresh, but it hasn't been dried. I usually get this frozen. It'll be called grated coconut. If you cannot find this, you can substitute dry shredded coconut. What I do is I just rehydrate it a little bit with some hot water, just so you achieve the same amount of moisture. Because essentially, it's the same. Same thing. The only thing is, if you get the dry coconut, make sure it's not the sweetened one because that'll throw everything off. And then one egg going in there. Now I like to mix everything in here first before I put the rice in because then I only have to worry about mixing the rice rather than trying to get all this other stuff mixed as well. Okay, so now that that's all mixed up, yeah, you're gonna go in with your rice, and the rice is four cups of cooked. Now I kept it warm because it's not good to use old or cold rice for this because when it's cold and old, the grains don't stick together very well, and then the form it won't form balls; it'll just kind of fall apart. So. And if you have, you're using old rice, just make sure you reheat everything back up before you use it. So I'm using four cups. Now rice has a raw to cooked ratio of about one to three. So in order to get four cups of rice, if you cook about one and a half cup of raw rice, you should get at least that much. It's good to know when you're trying to cook rice for a lot of people. Okay, and now you're just gonna mix it all up, and don't worry about. Being careful not to mush the rice. If it gets mushed up a little bit, it's okay. It'll actually help your ball stick together. If some of the rice gets mushed along the way, okay. 
Now at this point, uh, you can taste it if you'd like to see if you want to adjust anything. If you are afraid of eating raw eggs, you can microwave it a little bit and make sure that's cooked before you taste it. Okay, now we just have to form these into balls. Now, you can do this with bare hands if your hands are clean, but remember this is spicy, so if you're going to do it with bare hands, just be careful where you put them afterwards. So I don't have any gloves on me, so I'm just going to use these plastic bags that I brought from Thailand. If you've been to Thailand, you know they sell food and they put them in here. So I use them to grab things like this. They're usually round and they're about, I guess, the size of a plum, roughly. You can make them round, which will take a little more effort but it's going to be more quote-unquote authentic because that's how they're sold on the street. Okay, that's not very round, but you get the idea. Um, but the rounder you make it, the more oil it's going to take because round things are deep. So if you want to use less oil, you can do kind of pucks. You can make it bigger or smaller. It's not that big of a deal. The only thing you need to be aware of is the bigger they are, the less crispy bits you're going to have because we're going to fry these and the outside will be crispy and the inside will be soft. And the way surface, surface area to volume ratio works is that the bigger it is, the less surface area you have for the volume. So just something to keep in mind. Oh, by the way, keep them really tight so that when you go to fry them, they don't fall apart on you. So just press, press, press really, really hard. So we're going to fry our rice balls now. So I'm going to make a batter of just simply rice flour and slightly less water. Now the batter isn't absolutely necessary. It's actually optional whether you want to do it or not. Sometimes if I get lazy, I don't bother with it. There is one benefit to having a batter and that is if you fry the, if you fry the rice balls, without the batter, if you've got any sort of bits of rice that's sticking up that's not completely flushed with the, with the surface, it'll get very fried. <laughs> and then that bit is gonna get so crunchy that it's almost hard and a bit uncomfortable to eat. So when you dip it in the batter, the batter will sort of form a protective layer and prevent that from happening and it'll even out any, you know, unsmoothness, any dips and valleys. If you're going to skip the batter, just make sure you smooth out the rice really well before you go to fry them. So the consistency will be quite thin. We don't want any sort of, you know, it's not tempura. It's just a little bit of coating. It should almost be invisible when you go to finish it in the end. Yeah, that's good. So oil is going to be at 350 as per usual. I forgot my thermometer today so what I usually do is I just throw in bits of rice in there and if it starts bubbling right away then I'm around that ballpark figure so I'm gonna go in with this one and if I dip it and then immediately it's not bubbling then I can quickly take it out it's not a big it's not a big deal it's a bit low right now but I'm gonna let it go anyway and then wait a bit before I put in my next one it's not bad it's a bit on the low side. It's not as excited as I wanted it to be. So these are going to take about eight minutes. So they take a long time. There's nothing really for you to cook other than perhaps the eggs, but that doesn't take very long. But you're really going for getting a nice golden crispy outside. So that's really all you got to look for. If it's nice and crispy and a beautiful brown color, then you're done. Usually in my experience it takes about eight to 10 minutes. Mmm, they smell so good. Okay, so these are our beautiful, beautifully fried rice balls or cow tot. Just wanted to point out the differences between the ones that I battered and the ones that I didn't. The ones that I did not batter looks almost nicer, but you can feel that if there are any rice grains that are sticking out, they feel a little hard. Whereas these ones are all smooth, there's no hard bits anywhere. So it's up to you whether that's an issue or not. Both ways work. I should point out though that if you don't batter them, they cook quite a bit faster because you know there's less stuff to penetrate. So maybe six minutes is about when they're going to be done. So they're, we're going to let this sit 
for now while we get our salad bar ready. So here is what you will need. Nam or sour fermented sausage, julienned ginger, thinly sliced shallots, roasted peanuts, chopped cilantro, chopped green onions, chopped sawtooth coriander, this is optional, and in case you're not familiar with it, this is what it looks like. Chili flakes, lime juice, fish sauce, and some crisp lettuce for wrapping. So first, let's take a look at our sausage, our hero. So this is my nam, or my sour fermented sausage, and that's basically raw pork that has been fermented with some seasoning and some pork skin. And as the pork sits, the bacteria in the pork produces lactic acid, which is why it's sour. And if it sits for long enough, there's enough lactic acid that it renders the environment too acidic for disease-causing bacteria, i.e. botulism, to grow. So you won't get sick when you eat it. Now, a lot of people make their own. I bought this. Now, obviously, there's the sensitive food safety issue here. So if you're going to make your own, please be careful. Nowadays, they also sell nam making powder, which contains uh, starter bacterial culture and also sodium nitrite, which will inhibit botulism. It's up to you whether or not you want to make it yourself, but I'm going to buy it and leave it to the experts. So what you want to do is just break this up for the salad bowl and you can use as much of it as you like. And then you can see the stringy bits here are just pork skin. You can also just chop it, but it looks a little more rustic if you mangle it up. Obviously, you can have as much or as little of this stuff as you like. I'm just going to do this for now and I'll deal with the other one later. All right, let's mix everything together. So you want to first start out with rice balls. Just a couple is good. And then I'm going to smash it. I know you're thinking, all that work. That's how I felt too the first time. But alas, one's got to do what one's got to do. Okay. And now you're going to go in with our nam here. I'm just going to use it all. And then this is the fun part. You get to pick everything. Some green onions, however much you like. There's no right or wrong. Some cilantro. Obviously, you cilantro haters out there, no need. Some ginger. I like quite a bit of ginger, actually. Shallots. Not too much for me. Some sawtooth coriander. Uh, if you can't find it, no worries. You can also use mint. Mint is actually really good in this as well. Some chili flakes to make it a little extra spicy. Peanuts. All in there. Looks good already, doesn't it? And then you're going to do a big squeeze of lime. We're going to taste all this. So A little bit of extra fish sauce. Not too much. And then you're going to mix it up and then taste it. Mix it up quite well. A little more chilies, a little extra lime, and some more peanuts. All right, so here's how you eat it. There. Mm, that looks so good. Okay, I'm, I forgot to mention, I'm missing one kind of important ingredient here, which is extra pork skin, and it's basically cooked pork skin that they've sliced thinly. It's already in the nam, but people like to add extra of it. I can't find it here, and I really didn't want to go through the process of making it myself. Plus, I'm not a big fan of it, so it's all right. Uh, lettuce. So when you go to buy it, they'll also always serve it with some fresh lettuce. And I'm using green leaf lettuce, which is typical. Uh, you can use butter lettuce is great, romaine, anything that's crisp and fresh, whatever you like, whatever you have is perfect. You just take this piece, I don't know, something that will comfortably fit into your mouth, obviously. Put some of it in. Make sure you've got everything you want in there. Wrap it up. That was really good. I mean, it's sour and salty and fresh and crunchy and munchy with all the nuts in there. And you know what's even better? You have to try this. Make enough so you have a leftover for tomorrow morning. Heat it up a little bit. Fry a nice egg. If you like over easy, that's even better. Put the egg on top, mix the whole thing up. It makes the best breakfast. 
So that's all for today. If you want the recipe for this dish, you can visit hotthaikitchen.com. If you enjoy the show, please click to subscribe and I will see you next time for your next delicious Thai meal.